Good afternoon all and thank you so much for joining us for our first Secret Sunday session for 2021. Um, so to start the new year and to start our Secret Sunday session, um, I'm joined by beautiful and amazing Chloe from the Self Care Sisterhood. Um, so just to start us off, Chloe, what is the Self Care Sisterhood? Oh, if I'm honest, the self-care sisterhood originally started as an Instagram account that I made for myself when I was in recovery for bipolar disorder. Um, and I didn't know any other ladies with mental illness in my city. Um, I live in Newcastle, Australia, um, two hours above Sydney. And I was just like, I just need help. Like, I want to find people who are like me, who are living with mental illness, chronic illness and chronic pain. Um, and so I started meeting people online and connecting people, kind of like how we connected as well. Um, <laughs> And then it became like people wanted advice and I was like, oh, like I'm not qualified to give any advice. I'm just life experience. But then I, um, I retrained, I used to be an ECT and a primary teacher and I hurt my back and that was the catalyst to go, mm, this could be a thing. Like I'm sure there's other women like me who need this help. And then it became a small business of, yeah, um, body positive or what I like to call like health at every size, weight neutral fitness for women. Um, but with a really heavy focus on mental health. So we're not worrying about how big or small your body is or any of that stuff. It's um, how you're feeling. Is this adding value to your life? Um, and also being a safe space for ladies who are living with chronic illness, chronic pain, um, mental health issues. So whether it's um, recovery for eating disorders or just someone who's just sick of being in diet culture and that kind of stuff. So yes, yeah, so that's how it started. So it was basically I was the guinea pig and I was like, I need this. So surely other people need this. Um, so yes, yeah, so it basically started on that as well is um, I participated in a clinical pilot trial um, at Newcastle University for women with depression. And at the time I didn't know I had bipolar, I just thought I was really sad all the time. Um, <laughs> and so I did the trial and they almost didn't let me in because I was so depressed. Um, but after the 12 week period working with an exercise physiologist called Adriana, who I love, still in contact with, um, I was no longer categorized as depressed anymore. So I'd went from moderate to severe to like basically no symptoms so it was manageable and then I figured out I had bipolar after that <laughs> um, that kind of helped spin push me into that but um, like understanding the life-giving experience of movement like um, like movement where you're empowered and you have options and you have choice not having some like big meathead dude yell at you in a park somewhere or you know you know just like you know being in a gym and trying to do something and someone's like oh let me spot you and you're like mm, no I don't need sexual harassment today thank you um, you're killing my vibe I'm listening to Beyonce like leave me alone um so basically it was created with all those things in mind but yeah I was a guinea pig so um I couldn't find anywhere that I wanted to work out in because everywhere was scary and loud and full of like things like don't eat food for seven days and you'll lose X amount of weight. And I was like, that doesn't seem like a wise like, space to be in. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, that's pretty much how it started. Um, and then now it's grown to, we've got almost a hundred members now. Um, so it's grown really quickly in three years. Um, and we just moved studios to a bigger space. So I was just saying to Ashley, Congrats. before we were living in a bit of a little cave. Now we're in a bit of a bigger studio. So much yeah. prettier. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. have an outhouse anymore, so that's exciting. <laughs> Move it on up in the world. <laughs> yeah. So why do you think um, people come to you then? Women, do they come with you with issues that they're already um, facing themselves? I think so. I think a lot of our girls come to us and they've stalked us for quite a while on social media, which we love because it helps them to get to know us and know that we're what we're about is what we're really about. Um, I think a lot of ladies resonate with my story of living with mental illness. Um, I also live with endometriosis and um, chronic migraines as well. So I have a lot of stuff <laughs> that I have to manage. Um, and so for me, self-care is that framework with movement to help keep me well. Um, and then it's just a really cool starting point because people are like, oh, you have stuff too. And we're like, me too. And we're like, look, show me my bag of stuff. And then this is person's, look at my wheelie bag of stuff. And so it's this really good, like, um, I guess I'm not the authority or like, the person in charge like I'm there to go alongside them and so are our teachers because um, I think a lot of gyms are like you're the client I'm the trainer you know kind of like that Michelle Bridges kind of like aggressive yelling thing um, yeah. that's what they think it can be but I've, but then they find out oh like it's really fun and we have zooper dippers at the end of class and like we hang out and yeah so um, I think there's a lot of ladies who are dealing with like past trauma around movement so whether it's being yelled at in a boot camp or being told by a doctor 
you know, about their, their weight or you need to exercise because you weight and not actually about their enjoyment or their pleasure or their, you know, strength or, um, so a lot of women are dis I think disempowered with movement. And so when it's, they find a space they can move, they're like, Oh, this is amazing. No one's telling me what to do. I get to choose. I get to have agency over my own body. And, um, I think just in general, as women, we live in a man's world. So we, you know, we can't, walk home at 1 a.m. in the morning you know so we're aware there's lots of other things in our lives that we don't have control over so to have control over our bodies and how we move them um it's really empowering I think yeah and then on, on top of that mental health you're like oh I feel a little bit less angry today or um you know like I was in a we call it in class the scale of like poo to big poo like how how like <laughs> it sounds a bit silly but kind of like how, how how shitty has your day been basically right. okay. um, and like you <laughs> no know where that was going <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's a big cue. Um, so, yeah, like, kind of was it a little bit poo? Like, oh, it was a little bit average. Um, you know, or was it like a really big poo day? Like, kind of, um, and we have a lot of ladies of mental illness, so everyone's like, oh, Chloe, it was a number three. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's just monitor that energy level today. <laughs> you know, um, if you're doing boxing, like, just take it out on your partner in a loving but aggressive way, um, you know. <laughs> so just helping people feel their feelings through movement as well, I think, is um, pretty good. You can use it in your, as like a toolbox of things. You know, I want to feel a little bit more energized. I'm going to do boxing. I want to calm the heck down. I want to do some yin yoga. Um, you know, I want to do something really slowly. So I'm going to pick something up for 10 times and then have a rest, walk around the room. So it's something for everyone's kind of mental state, I think, as well, yeah. um, which is what I think is important. So when I was really depressed, I was like, I can count to 10 and then I can have a rest. Like that feels yeah. achievable for me with you know, cognitive kind of <laughs> brain brain fog and all that stuff that you get. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what we do. Yeah. Wow. So do you do you see that women do feel more empowered when after they come um, come away from you know exercising at your do you class it as a gym or do you class it as a movement? Uh, sometimes people call it a gym. And I'm like, oh, don't call it that. Um, <laughs> I, I call it a studio. Um, yeah. I like to think of it as, it sounds a bit silly, but like you get to make it up. So you think of like an artist studio, there's so many possibilities for making things. Like I kind of think of it as that kind of, no, you get to create what you want for your body that day. Um, we guide you with like a plan and we guide you with the assistance and the technique and the skill, but you ultimately get to choose how intense you go or how much you lift or yeah so um yeah that's kind of the what we do yeah <laughs> I love that that's so cool I want to come and join wow. <laughs> Emily, <you> come down. <laughs> wow and so as I sort of talked about before and you said that women you know rebuilding that relationship with movement mm -hmm. do you find that women are starting to improve their relationship with movement when they come to you and once they continue to do classes I think uh, there's, we tend to get two groups of people. So people who are kind of like, they've discovered there's this thing called diet culture and it's a bit crap and they don't want to live in that world anymore. And they're like, I'm so ready, help me out, give me support and guidance. And then we've got some ladies who come in and they're still really focused on weight and the aesthetics of movement. And then they come in and they realize like this is whole other world. Like they just didn't know that they could do it any other way. Like they thought, oh, but I thought I had to, you know, stretch for five minutes, go on a treadmill for 45 minutes, stretch and then go home. Like I can choose. So it's kind of like most people don't realize they need body positive, weight neutral movement because they've never experienced it. So they don't have anything to go off. And then they come in and they're like, Chloe, I just did 50 kilogram deadlift. And I was like, woohoo. And like we you know, do a little bit. <laughs> But like they've never they've they have they have never had that opportunity to try before. Um so yeah, it's kind of those two groups, yeah. So um most people who most people who find us are pretty like pretty keen to get started and like, oh, thank the Lord. Like you're not gonna weigh me, you're not gonna measure me, you're not gonna be like, Oh, you had a glass of wine and we're like, Woo, you had a glass of wine, like it's 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 a glass of wine. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. kind of new culture. Um that's awesome. Yeah. So, Just got to yeah. accept women for everything they do and celebrate movement and also yeah. enjoyment with everything they do. That's incredible. I, I'm so happy that you're doing that and Thank congratulations. You. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so, I wanna, good. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about your background and your history. So you did say that you found out that you had bipolar. Um, so how did that come about? Did something trigger you to go into that deep depression? Um, I think for me, 
I live with a family with a history of mental illness, but, yeah. but doesn't want to accept that they have mental illness. So kind of like that line, like she goes to therapy for the people in her life that won't go to therapy. That's kind of was me for the last 10 years. Um, and, and I was, yeah, kind of stuck in a really heavy depression. So for me, it was starting in probably, I'd say year six was pretty bad. So I remember a teacher saying to me, oh, they'd call, call me melancholy girl. And I just thought, yeah, like I was really, and I didn't look back and I was really heavily depressed and um, I had some girlfriends in high school who would pretty much come to my house every day in, in Port Stephens and Anna Bay and literally like bang on the front door to make me leave the house because I was so um, depressed. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, family history. Um, and literally um, it was the fitness trial, the clinical fitness trial that helped me figure it out. So I was really heavily depressed and I did that for 12 weeks and basically what happened was the medication I was on is a very high dose of antidepressants um, and because I was exercising quite regularly and my body was getting all the good juices from all the good things um, and then the medication it kind of actually sent me into a bit of like a like a false high kind of like yeah. a, a like a hypermanic state for about I say about six months I was probably mm -hmm. like the most energizer bunny person you could ever meet I was like I was always like I was eight Red Bulls in, you know, I was always like, woo, like, you know, getting all the yeah. house being done. And um, it kind of triggered for me when I was living with my best friend, Steph, who is a health at every size dietitian. And she's like, cool, so it's really not normal to vacuum at 2 a.m. Just, on oh. a, you know, it's really, but like, yeah, and for me, it was like going out of the fitness trial, doing all this exercise, moving my body, um, but then also going into a state of hypermania. But I'm very thankful because I would never have found out otherwise I don't think I think it would have progressed slower um, and I think it would have been worse so yeah I'm very thankful so I got diagnosed in 2013 um, and then I got medicated and then yeah kind of went from there but it's been a bit of a struggle there's always struggles along the way but um, yeah very thankful God's got this plan and I've just been able to keep moving and growing and stuff so yeah yeah that's so awesome I and so where you're at now is, is something that you're still having to manage in everyday life? Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty well managed with my bipolar, but I do know my window of tolerance. So I kind of know certain things that really will set off little mood shifts. So I'm pretty stable with my moods. I haven't had um, a major depressive episode um, for a really long time, um, but my kind of... I guess you could call it like style of bipolar or there's always a spectrum of different disorders um, with bipolar 2 is I tend to be more elevated than depressed now because of the changes with medication and stuff um, but that's always been me I didn't realize that I was having little elevated highs all throughout my life and then going oh that thing that I did when I was 12 yeah that was hypermania like that wasn't lollies at a kid's <laughs> party you know <laughs> like it was, it was <laughs> media. um and then yeah learning what's me and what's bipolar and kind of going from there but I'm pretty much well managed now I, I'm pretty I'm pretty stubborn about my boundaries like my sleep schedule is like my first pillar of self-care so if someone's like let's stay up late I'm like sorry have to be in bed by 11 p.m at the latest because I will not be a nice person in the morning <laughs> if I don't. Um, but yeah, just things like that. And also movement is really good for me as well with pain. And um, yeah, so that's my, yeah. That's what well, doing. <laughs> so you talked all, uh, you mentioned there that you had to figure out which was you and which was bipolar. Mm -hmm. We find a lot as well with girls with eating disorders and even in my own experience, how it was really hard to separate yourself from the eating so, disorder and your own thoughts. How did you go with that experience, having to define it as something different? Really hard because people, I lost a lot of friends when they found out that I had bipolar and like I had a little kind of, I'd say toxic people leave, which was really great because it opened up this realm of people to support me. Um, but for me, I read a book, um, oh, what's it called? Um, it's by an Australian author about bipolar and it's the experiences of other people with bipolar and the different varying degrees of it because I thought I'd never learnt anyone else's how it works for them and this is just my version of bipolar but I often say to the girls I have a little mole here I don't know if you can see it I've had sunburn hopefully you don't <laughs> see my gross skin. but I always say to the girls like bipolar is like this mole like it's a part of my body but you wouldn't say like Chloe is a mole you wouldn't say like I'm only this mole I have a mole but I am not the mole does that make sense? That's yeah, awesome. I love that. <laughs> um, but then also, I think in the last two years as well, for me, I'm not really offended by the label. Um, I know people go through stages of going, I don't want to be associated. And then 
pet be heavily associated because the label gives them kind of direction of where to get support. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of been through that. But now I'm like, I'm Chloe. I have a mole. Take it or leave it. <laughs> like I'm not that bothered. But I've, I have been diagnosed for a really long time. Yeah. So, yeah, I think people go through stages. And um, I'm also in a safe environment. I forget that I'm in a safe bubble at my studio. I've got 100 ladies who are all dealing with varying degrees of, you know, um, you know, transitioning or, um, you know, um, schizophrenia or coming out of eating disorder, like recovery and, and like all those different things. So we all kind of, I don't know, I forget that I'm in a very safe space. Not many people can have, be that free about like, Hey, I've got bipolar. My brain makes me do weird stuff. Um, mm -hmm. not everyone has that safe space, but mm -hmm. that's why I created it. Cause I don't, didn't have one before, <laughs> That's um, awesome. but it's fun. Um, my bipolar helps me to do my job really well with my girls. So, um, I don't get nervous speaking in public. Um, good old bipolar gives me a bit of, um, elevated <laughs> enthusiasm and confidence. Um, but yeah, like, um, it's got, it's good merits cause I can relate to people and say, Hey, you know, they shared with me, I have ladies sharing with me often they've had self harm in the past or they are a suicide survivor and, and sometimes I'll say, oh, me too. Um, and they'll, they'll be kind of like, wow, that was a really cheery way to um, <laughs> disclose that. But um, kind of like we can kind of relate to each other that way and know that it's like that shared understanding. And I'm sure you feel that too mm -hmm. in the eating disorder space. You see someone, you're like, hey, like, I get <laughs> yeah. you, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. That knowledge of like, we've been through hell and we're still living. So mm -hmm. like, go us. Um, but yeah, that's how I kind of approach it. So yeah. yeah. I hope it doesn't sound too cavalier the way I... No, like, not at all. Like, that's my life experience. Um, but, yeah, so... But it, t it takes time. Yeah, mm. me, like, seven or eight years ago, would have been like, I'm not speaking on a podcast about bipolar <laughs> or anything. <laughs> now I'm like, let's tell everyone. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, why do you think that people are so fearful of someone that if they, they go out and they're like, oh, I've got bipolar or I've got schizophrenia, mm. why do you think we put up the red flags in our head and we back away? I think because we've, I'm sure we've all got, I think, lived experience of someone who was very unwell with it and we only associate that person in that unwell stage of bipolar or schizophrenia or eating disorder recovery and we don't know that, like, the person next to us at work who doesn't eat their lunch at work doesn't, you know, it doesn't fit that typecast of what people think eating disorder should be or bipolar um, mm -hmm. should be. People, a lot of people say to me, oh, you're bipolar, really? And they get really surprised because... I'm, I'm, I, ha I can work and I'm doing lots of fun things, but they also don't see behind the scenes of how much work it is to be a functioning human yeah, yeah. <laughs> or even semi-functioning, you know, um, like, um, yeah, I live with chronic pain. Um, I'm, a, I'm on NDIS, which has been amazing to help me stay working, um, yeah. which has been a huge relief this year. Um, yeah, people don't know behind the scenes. My psychologist said to me this year, she rang me halfway through the year. She's like, I haven't seen you for a few months. I'm like, are you okay? Like, cause COVID and everything. And I was like, I'm actually doing okay. And she's like, what do you think it is? I'm like, well, I have a cleaner that helps me at home and I see you pretty regularly anyway. And I've got my support systems. And so it's just knowing what you need to get support, I guess. But, um, yeah, I think it looks different for everyone. Um, and you know, what works for some people doesn't work for others and, um, I think me being in a space around women who are all seeking the same thing holds me to a very high level of accountability to get my crap together. But sometimes I don't have it together and I share that also with them. So um, I think we just need authentic spaces where we can be ourselves. Um, we often talk about being like a, a space free of shame, guilt or fear, um, whether we put that on other people or we kind of put that on ourselves. It's um, once we go, no, that's not, that's not what that is. We don't do that anymore. You know, um, we can kind of come into, I guess, more kinder spaces in our own brain and in, in community too. So yeah. Yeah. So how do you stay positive? You know, dealing with the chronic pain that you are dealing with, how do you get on with the day? Uh, look, if I'm really honest, I cry a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I, I don't know why I'm laughing, but like it, I, I do, there's lots of coping methods. Um, I, I, my job helps keep me set safe. So when I'm running classes or PTs, I'm warming up with that client. I'm doing a lot of stretching every day. Um, and it's really good for pain relief as well. Um, and also just for me with the brain fog of bipolar, I do get a bit ditzy sometimes like, oh, is it Saturday or is it Tuesday? Like having the movement can kind of just help you move through a mood. Um, 
yeah so that's kind of what I do at the moment <laughs> and alongside that have you know people in my life that I can my top five people that I say hey if you think I'm getting a bit bit little bit um cuckoo we call it cuckoo in my house because um I guess with mental illness everyone has their own tells of like yeah. when they're getting progressively worse so um my husband say, says I talk at a different volume. Right. <laughs> when I'm unwell, I'll talk very loudly. Um, my big tells for me is when I'm a little bit more elevated is I'll, we call it concrete tongue. So it's a very physiological symptom of bipolar. You get like pressured speech. So I'll be talking to you like, hey, Ashley, and you'll be like, what did you wow. just say? Like, have you been drinking? And I'd be like, I promise I haven't. <laughs> um, so it's like pressured speech. Um, yeah, things like that. So they're kind of a few little tells that I look out for and, you know, safe people in my life that won't, um, I guess, use those tells against me and say, oh, you're unwell. You know, that kind of gaslighting thing that often happens in the eating disorder and mental health space. Um, so yeah. they're my safe people. So yeah, they look out for me and pull my button to gear and say you've been going to bed really late it's time to go to bed early <laughs> do you ever find that you get I know we um experience a lot of um girls as well that sometimes get annoyed when people are constantly checking in oh. do you find that yeah I get really pissed off <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're just, always on your back <laughs> I'm just like please come on um my thing I learned was the best thing that ever like occurred to me was um listening to I think it was a podcast or a talk by Brene Brown and she says she's got a little piece of paper in her wallet with like three or four names and those are the people who are only allowed to ask her those type of recovery questions everyone else doesn't get a say so unless you're unless you're not my doctor my psychiatrist uh, you know in my case my best friends my pastor or my husband you don't get to have a say so um, but also picking people that are safe to do those things so I used to have someone in my life who was I considered a safe person and um they used my symptoms against me do you know what I mean like kind of making me feel less than and I realized oh taking you off my little sheet of paper so I, wrote, I literally have one in my wallet where is it somewhere behind here um, literally this tiny little scraggy piece of paper I was like these people only um because there's always people wanting to give you advice who have a qualification from wikipedia or something and you're like no you're not a psychiatrist I'm not gonna take that on you know and I'm sure you've experienced the same yeah people. yeah you've got to have trust with the people that are around you yeah definitely definitely and boundaries and kind of knowing cool like I know you mean well but it's exhausting to answer the same questions over mm -hmm. and over and um, I'm not sure if you've heard of the spoon theory yes I've heard of it not I don't know much about it but I've yes I've heard of it yeah, so basically you have a certain allotment of spoons, like kind of, I'd kind of call it like mental bandwidth during the day or your window of tolerance. And so every time you use a spoon, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you have like no mental bandwidth or like no physical energy. Um, and so, yeah, it's knowing who to give those spoons to, I guess, um, which takes practice. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah. But, but you got to protect yourself so you can actually keep recovering and looking after yourself. And, and like we both know, it's a... It's like recovery never ends. It's a it's a long term ga like game. Like game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I want to talk a little bit about self care. So, yeah. what is self care for those of people that don't know? Because there's so many different definitions out there. Um, so, what is it to you? So, for me, self care isn't a thing. It's a framework, and it's a really amazing framework that can empower us in every other area of our lives. So. I talk to our girls about a framework of, um, I guess, like you've got a chair um, and so you've got different legs on your chair and the more legs you have on your chair which in different areas of your life, so maybe spiritual, physical, emotional, um, psychological, um, workplace, like study, um, the more like kind of legs you have on your chair for all those different areas, the more stable your chair is. But once some of the legs start to get a little bit, you know, wobbly or they crack off or they fall off, um, then you become quite unstable because you're relying on quite, quite a small amount of things to help you. And so say if your self-care strategies are baths and Netflix and uh, the power goes out and, you know, um, there's a clogged drain, like you don't have options. And I know that's probably not going to happen, but if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> 
So I often say to the girls, you know, thinking about, um, you know, emotional self-care, what things are you doing to support that, um, how, how the mood that you have that day, psychological, how you're talking through those things, um, physical, how can you use movement to pep you up if you're feeling down or to give you release from anger, resentment, grief, um, depression. Um, it can be a really cool tool and lots of different things you can do there too, like meditation or stretching or... Uh, my fascia release, which is a really fun one. Everyone hates it at the studio, but it's good for you. Um, and things like, um, you know, like workplace and study boundaries. So um, do you have an automation for emails for the weekend so no one tries to contact you at weird times or boundaries? or Yeah, it can be so many different things, but, um, you know, it can be spiritual. So going out, you know, to church or temple or mosque or, you know, um, going and sitting under the stars and going, wow, how cool is creation? This is so cool. Um, it, yeah, it's something different for everyone. So, yeah. yeah it sounds cool. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it sounds like a beautiful life. Um, and I think a lot of people think that's an unrealistic life. Mm. There's that perception. Um, yeah, yeah. What do you say to people that say, yeah, they think it's unrealistic and they think, well, I, I don't have time to do any of that. Yeah. I think if I can be really blunt, if you don't have time for it, you're going to find yourself in hospital real quick. And I learned that the hard way. Um, but also knowing that, uh, I guess, with examples of self-care, so something that I do, like every Friday night, is I buy crust pizza and I eat this pizza by myself watching a show that fills me up. And that's a ritual that I do for myself. And people think, what? Eating pizza? You're a PT. You know, all that diet culture kind of coming yeah. in. Um, I go, well, it nourishes my soul and it nourishes my belly and it works for me. Um, I have one girlfriend who... Um, has a med ball that she has in her backyard and so when she's having a really hard day she'll just do some med ball slams in the backyard just to release some anger and it's a good way for her to have feel her feelings acknowledge them um, not try to fix them or push them down um, but just getting it through her body like moving the emotion through her body so that she can um, react to people in her life in a healthy way rather than coming from a very reactive I guess so I'd say to people, self-care is responsive or like, uh, I guess, what would you call it? Preventative. So okay. preventative. But it doesn't have to be like sitting on the top of a mountain in an ashram somewhere, you know, a yogi up a tree or something. It can be yeah. like pizza on Fridays, a little ritual with yourself, or it can be, um, for me personally, like seeing my psychologist. That's like a date that I don't ever interrupt ever I'm like she's in there I'm gonna go see Amanda uh, I'm gonna tell her all the things it's gonna be you know like the uh, Amanda Bynes show but with Chloe I'm just gonna be the talk show host of my own show for an hour and um, make help my brain feel good <laughs> yeah. yeah so I think people overcomplicate it. it doesn't have to be fancy or you know like something that a model in vogue would do with their 47 step skincare routine it can literally be I applied deodorant that can be self-care <laughs> i'm wearing matching shoes um you know it doesn't have to yeah. be um yeah i hope that makes sense it doesn't have to yeah. be instagram worthy um, yeah. we call it at the studio uh boring self-care so what things are you doing to support future me like for me it's like filling out my pill box or i bought like a snack for this afternoon so i was hungry so i got some milo um because you know the milo drink having the milo um it's convenient it's quick um and it, it tastes good and i really like it so you know those little choices um but yeah it can be things like i don't know saying to people like my quota for hangouts on the weekend is one event per day because otherwise you get resentful and tired and grumpy yeah. So. yeah. What about you? What do you do for self-care? Um, I have been on a journey of my own, sort of just yeah. trying to find out what works for me. Because at the start, I was kind of like, well, I don't know. There was so many different... You look up online, and you, you go to Dr. Google, and you're like, what is self-care? Um, and all these options <laughs> came up. And I was like, well, I don't know what works for me, what doesn't. So yeah. I'm still learning and trying different things. I've recently um, loved meditation. I've never got into it, but yes. now I'm just learning to just still my mind has just been amazing. And walks. I love walks. So yeah. sightseeing That's on good. the beach. So Where do you go walking? Do you go like bush or beach or like? Um, I love I love a good hike. 
yeah. um but lately you know with the weather and everything i've just been uh, yeah. like beaching it so uh, yeah. yeah just i think i've always been about you sort of just learn what's right for you what works for you and what works for me isn't yeah. going to work for you so you've got to build that. your own toolbox definitely like having a try and going oh that doesn't work why was i trying to do that oh because i thought i should be doing that mm. like for me as well i discovered meditation when i had um so before I started the studio, I was bed bound for two years with migraines, pretty bad. And I discovered meditation by accident because I literally was like, I'm not going to the hospital. I've had a four day migraine. I'm going to breathe until it goes away because I'm very stubborn like that. And then I went and saw my psychologist. She's like, Chloe, you meditated for four days, basically. That's why you feel so calm and relaxed because I just felt like white space and I was like what is this magical thing and she's like meditation I was like oh that's wanky I don't want to do that people <laughs> you know what I, mean? I think but, people are scared of it yeah it's right. like meditation is and yoga is kind of like this different mystic like, thing yeah well, I think it's gonna you know and obviously there's different um types of meditation you've got to find the flavor for you I say to the girls it's like types of shoes you've got to find which one feels comfy and fits um so I mostly go with um, self-compassion meditation so like coming yeah. from like Kristen Neff um, and like um, Tara oh, what's her name Tara Brack um, and they kind of yeah so that's really helpful for me just to be nice to myself when my brain is like very negative and mm -hmm. um, you know bipolar trying to actively you know get me down and <laughs> get, get me sad so yeah is there any self-care activities that you can offer people as in advice or just suggestions in terms of if they get a negative thought or if they're having a crappy day what can they go to or to help relieve that negativity definitely um i have some weird breathing strategies that i use with my girls I'm interested. i don't know if you've done them. Um, they're pretty weird we did some last night at bend and stretch and they were like i don't want to do that that's weird um so you can use breathing and um, in lots of different ways um, to help pull you up and also calm you down. So sometimes what I do when people are having quite a big anxiety attack or something's happening in their life, we do what we call bumblebee breath. Um, so it's a bit weird. So would you like me to show you? It's a bit weird. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so basically you take a deep breath through your nose and once you get to the top of your inhale, you actually put your thumbs in your ears and then you can only hear the sound of your own breath as you breathe out and you go, Mm, and you try to make it as loud and mm, <laughs> but make sure you take a good breath otherwise you get a little testy pop like me um and so you try and hold the breath as long as you can and so there's something about um i was reading something something about something to do with the way it, it interrupts in your brain it kind of just i guess inter can I interrupt a thought or maybe the sensation is a really fun one so we do that at the end of the week just to kind of go really get it out of the busyness of the week. Um, yeah, yeah. Another one we do is called lion's breath. Um, it's a bit weird. I'll show you this one too. So <laughs> <laughs> we're really into breathing here. Um, so we take a deep breath in and sometimes you might need to find a space not near people because they might think you're doing something really weird. But basically you stick your tongue out as far as you can and you open up your eyes and your mouth is like your one of those like um, sideshow like clowns on like one of those kind oh, yes. of So you basically go, Oh, God. <laughs> and you try and do it for as long as you can. You try and get as grumbly or as loud as you can. Yeah. And you can also do it in a pose on your belly and you're pushing up with your arms. So you're opening up your chest and at the same time you're like, ah. and the girls always think I'm absolutely lost it when I show them. But at the end they're like, that was good. Like I kind of got things through. Um, so they just smile too. Yeah, it's, you can't not laugh. You're like, I look like an idiot. But <laughs> I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so awesome. yes, we do things like that. But then also more traditional stuff like, um, you know, deep belly breathing. Um, so just holding, feeling the breath through your body. Um, that kind of stuff. But for me, breath work is probably the first thing I go to when I'm stuck. So you can probably not do the first two options in a public space, but you can do the deep belly breathing and the alternate nostril breathing. Um, I've done it in an elevator. I've done it on a bus. I've done it on a train um, where I felt really anxious and I didn't have that personal space to leave, to go attend to my emotion. I had to do it right there. Um, so I often say that to people, uh, if you are having an anxiety attack, um, you know, just close your eyes, find a wall to lean against and just breathe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I encourage people to look up breathing techniques like um, four by four breathing and square breathing and um, you'll find heaps online. Yeah. 
Yeah, so what does the breath do in that? So if you're in a really high anxiety state or you've got a lot of energy and emotion running through you, what? how does the breath calm you down? So it's basically kind of accessing that kind of, um, I guess, you're coming into that, like, you're coming down the parasympathetic nervous system. So basically your body's going, something's happening, like I'm alert, I'm too alert. Um, so you can have kind of two types of things going on. You can be too alert, too anxious, too high, or you can be so low, so mellow, so kind of grumpy that you actually need to bring yourself out, out of it. It's kind of like hyper and hypo arousal. Um, yeah. So you're in these two states. So it, it kind of helps you to, I guess, one, come back into your body to build that body trust by um, practicing um, yeah. and also three not trying to fix anything it's not about fixing anything it's about like noticing um, and being an observer of your body so okay. I would say the girls it's like Dora the Explorer you're gonna like be Dora the Explorer you're gonna like figure out what's there you're not gonna judge you know what's going on you're just kind of noticing like oh you know, like my chest feels heavy or, um, oh, I can feel ripples in my belly or kind of like you would when you go to a cafe and you drink your coffee and you're kind of like people watching like, oh, that person looks, has an interesting hat. Like, I wonder what the story of the hat is, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. making it for yourself, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so if we talk about, as you said before, there's the chair um, and it has its four levers. Um, so what should someone have on their, let's just say like a self-care checklist? Ooh, I'd say um, sleep needs to be a pillar. So it needs to be a solid one. Um, we know that sleep is one of the first things to go for most people when they are in a bad mental health state. And so knowing how to manage sleep first is really good. Um, I'm a big believer in psychologists and counsellors and life coaches. I think you, everyone else has a coach for their soccer team, for their business, you know, um, why not for your brain? Because it's like the most important organ. So I'm like, get someone in your life who is a third person who is not going to have a biased opinion of you and is going to give you the skills and the strategies that you need, but also kind of like give you a little bit of a poke in the bum, like, hey, you need to look after yourself a little bit better. Let's explore how. Um, yeah. But in a loving way, not like a you're naughty kind of way. It's more like, let's get you going. Um, and then for me, uh, for me with mental illness, um, medication is a big pillar, it's something I'm going to be on for life. It took me a while to get used to that realization, but um, a lot of people fear medication when, uh, for me, medication meant freedom from a lot of the suffering that I was going through. Um, and I'd say community. So having, um, having people who respect you, whether or not you are ill or in that unwell space, um, is really important. So for me, um, my girl gang here at the studio, my church, um, my, my kind of self-made family. Um, so my self-made family is my girl gang, my original girl gang, um, when I was in high school and pretty much they were like, yeah, we knew you were pretty sick, but we looked after you. And so that was where I kind of modeled the idea of the sisterhood from is like, you know, that kind of like Vin mm -hmm. Diesel, like ride or die. Yeah. <laughs> so like, we got you. <laughs> got you. You know, you're, you're struggling, but we still love you. Um, yeah. having those people in your life, but you know, finding them is hard. So creating spaces where you can find it is important. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my and, uh, three things. Awesome. <laughs> and so how would someone know if something's lacking in their self-care checklist? So for example, if they're, they're not, sleeping as best that they can and um how would you know that is each day sorry i'll rephrase that each day do you should you be ticking off everything in that checklist if we go oh, back no you'll go insane <laughs> i'm sorry that's the wrong word you'll go you'll send yourself a bit tropo like you you will overwhelm yourself when i first started i was super perfectionistic and um because of the bipolar trying to get better, I got really perfectionistic about my recovery and then that just set me up for um, for a lot of struggle. So I would say to people, I think the foundation of your self-care needs to be built on self-compassion mm -hmm. and empathy for yourself. So that's where it really needs to start is, how would I speak to myself, like how would I speak to my best friend or how would I treat my best friend going through the same thing? Or um, my thing that I use with my girls is we call, is we call it the five-year-old rule. So Imagine yourself at five and I'm imagining myself with this giant fringe and I have buck teeth and I've got freckles everywhere. Um, I can't show you, but on this computer that I'm on here, it has me as, at like nine with this giant fringe still. It's very crooked. Um, but looking at little Chloe and going, 
well, how would I speak to her about what she's going to go through? How would I prepare her or how would I love her in that moment? So we often say to, you know, speak to yourself and say, Chloe, you're doing the best you can. It's going to be a really hard 10 years, but Mm -hmm. you have the skills, you've got the grit and the intelligence to keep going. um, And does that make sense to kind of speak to yourself? Which feels really weird, um, but when you start to do it it becomes natural and then it's like a little power tool that you have in your head and you go you start doing it for yourself without even realizing kind of with meditation um, yeah. I love of- it I've, I've I've got something similar on my um phone my home screen I've got a little picture of myself when I was younger. Yes, I um, yeah just a reminder to go like this is who you're fighting for this is um who you are and who you need to support and love yes definitely yes yes the little lasses I think it's important people get weirded out when I say that like what and I'm like show them my picture of me with my buck teeth and they're like oh my gosh I get it now (laughs) Um, I think visual visual cues are really important in recovery um especially when yeah we're dealing with things that are interrupting our sense of self um or how we perceive our bodies to look or be or yeah it's really important yeah so why do you think you decide to do a focus on women? Do you find women are more, I guess, attracted to the idea of self-care? Um, I think I've just been in so many male-dominant areas in my life. I kind of was like, I'm married. I love my husband. But, like, I'm kind of done with men. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm not a man hater, but I was yeah. just like, you know, I live with endometriosis. So, like, sometimes we just talk about vaginas after class. And no one's weirded out by that. I'm like, this is wonderful. Like, two other ladies I was talking to yesterday have endo. Um, you know, or someone's dealing with something that's a bit more sensitive or pregnancy stuff. Or um, I think there's something about sisterhood and being around other mm-hmm. women and having older women around younger women. Um, and, and everyone's mutually giving. So everyone's mutually receiving. And it's this beautiful like love bubble it's Mm. it's hard to describe um unless you've experienced it hopefully you have like um but it's just so life-giving and so knowing uh, when i'm stuck you know i've got brenda to talk to i'm looking at i don't know if i should turn around and show you i've got this (laughs) this wall the wall over there and i'm looking i'm like i can talk to kath about this and becky um and then i've got brenda and then courtney knows stuff about this and so it's like having this like little i guess you kind of call it like you know back in the old days with the the old ladies had like the phone tree and they've got all these people and they phone the friend and then that friend yeah. it. we've kind of got that yeah. you know, a tribe sort of feel yeah um awesome. something powerful about women all together advocating for others and also fun seeing people do it for others without me even being involved as their like you know community leader or pt i'm like oh look at these like someone just drove someone home or um you know someone's gonna bring someone a casserole or actually this is quite funny i've still got it on my desk you know i burnt my forehead so one of the girls came and brought me aloe vera <laughs> applying that in the, the no, shop like... <laughs> um, awesome. and things like that just like unexpected and you just like yeah. how cool is that um yeah so i think there's lots of really toxic female spaces as mm-hmm. well um and so our big overarching rule for the girls and my, my personal one for me personally is no mean girls. So like mm-hmm. I don't let my mean girl take over. I'll try not to. Um, and, and I don't, we promote that we treat each other kindly and with respect. And then when you do it for other people, you go, ah, oh, I can like do it for myself. So if I can, you know, speak to them nice or maybe I can bring someone else some aloe vera, then you're like, well, maybe I can bring myself some aloe vera. Like maybe I can, do you know, so it's like yeah. a, I think it's like practicing what we preach kind of thing and then it kind of starts to sink in I think on a deeper level yeah Um, and then it just gets a lot easier to be nice to yourself when you have an example of people being nice to you with no agenda whatsoever Um, and then you start being nice to yourself with no agenda it's like oh you know cool this is fun so yeah (laughs) have you heard of that concept before that the mean girl kind of yeah um Oh, and I've tried so hard to tell. I think a lot of a young girls as well is that yeah. you've got to find your own people and your own community yeah. that Definitely. support you and that you want to actually support them as well and you're not bitch about them because that's Definitely. it's so hard because during, you know, the young years and high school years, so much of the culture is oh girls gosh. just bitch yeah. about each other. It's terrifying. Oh, it's disgusting to think that that's how we treat each other and that's how it's just accepted. Um, which I, I was going to ask, like, yeah. how does a young person then or a young woman find their community? Mm. That's really hard. <laughs> um, I think looking for terminology that people are using 
on their websites and in social media and not being swept up with the whole there's so many people out there being so many people under the self-love banner mm -hmm. um i think we don't need to worry about self-love i think we need to get into self-acceptance or just tolerance um because uh, aspiring to that is really toxic but also knowing that people who are delivering these messages what are their qualifications what where are they from um I always get the girls sending me things on Instagram going, oh, I saw this on Instagram, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, no, stay away because of these risk factors. So I think especially for ladies who are in eating disorder recovery, if you're going to a gym, if you're going to a psychologist, if you're going to a doctor, remind, remember that you are the boss, you're paying them. And so if you're not happy with the way that you're getting that care or that treatment to get access to these communities, you can find someone else. Um, the same with the community groups as well. It's just... Um, I would say look out for people who are health at every size, kind of affiliated, so that means they don't promote weight loss or cleanses or, you know, sudden diets or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but also watching for the terminology. Um, and if you are wanting to get included in these groups, asking them, what what do you think about this? Um, like being, I don't know, have you had that experience of like coming with recovery of having to be really kind of not bubble wrap yourself because you we live in the world don't we but yeah. kind of like oh that's a bit off I'm not gonna go there like yeah <laughs> why does it sit right with me yeah you've got to unlearn I think everything that you did previously oh, learn and and flood yourself with positive yeah. um, messages about your body and self-acceptance um, rather than flood yourself with messages that you should be changing what you look like um, yes. I think that's where a lot of girls are still stuck in wanting to change what they look like when really you've got all this other information out there that you just need to jump on over um, and embrace all of that and learn from that. Um, but we're just missing that because this one's so dominant at the moment. Um, Definitely. Which is sad, but... And it's hard to find it because you don't know better. Mm. You can't do better until you know better, but then someone gives you a little hand up and you go, oh my gosh, and then you get to this next level of kind of body awareness and kind of body trust and you're like, oh, and then you find someone else that challenges, you know, like you can kind of, um, I guess, keep always keep learning. I think that's my yeah. view. Always keep learning. There's always people out there. Um, and you've got to be ready as well. You can't. It's one of those things that you've got to be prepared to go full in. Otherwise, if you still get your foot in the other one, it's um, it's just a lot harder to get out because you're still flooded with that culture. So you feel pulled in two directions, and you just feel really unaligned. I think, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And and so in your um your center or your facility um i, I always like gym no no <laughs> fine, <it's> fine. <laughs> um so do you do regular classes um and what are those classes what are you doing for your women we i call it pick and mix so uh pick and mix classes to suit your mood your energy um your stress levels and how much sleep you've had so that's kind of things that we go off in classes. So we've got um, boxing, um, we've got Pilates, we've got bar classes, ballet, strength training, um, agility, high intensity classes. Um, we've got bend and stretch, which is kind of like our prehab mobility class. So everyone gets all stretchy and feels lovely. Um, we do meditation. What else do we do? We do heaps of things. Yin, yin yoga, flow yoga. Um, we want it to, to be like a little... Oh, like, you know, when you go to buffet at like the RSL and you're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to have some Chinese, I'm going to have some a little bit of salad, veggies. Um, so it's kind of like that for classes. So our big thing is um, options for all bodies. It's about body respect and being respectful of our body is giving ourselves choice, but also us as trainers providing them with the choices so that they can have that kind of, um, I guess, autonomy over their bodies yeah so all of our classes are modifiable we've got blocks and chairs and straps and things to hold on to um got lots of ladies with varying degrees of um like physical disability and like chronic pain and things so we always we always choose yeah we always give options people are like oh do you really and i'm like yeah we do like this person here has fibromyalgia she's got a moving patella this person was in a car accident so like we have to it would be unethical of us to not give options yeah, yeah. So, and there's and it is an acceptive environment you don't you haven't had any issues with women wanting to I guess bring out that mean girl of them um I think I think we've had a few moments probably like oh, we, we call them we call it like a Karen moment so like maybe once very rarely people will be a mean girl very rarely um to, mostly to themselves um but also to like others by accident and then it'll be quickly solved by the you know 
people coming around this person going are you okay and then most of the time it's that person's actually really not coping and so they're projecting out some bit of frustration or a bit snippy or something um but, but to be honest we we have a lot of emotions at the studio so like people are free to cry here people have seen me get a bit teary before um it, it's not like oh she's crying over there they're like yeah. are you okay like what can we do or sometimes we'll have some like people cry after meditation and so it's the physical release of just releasing all this heaviness that they'll have a cry so yeah I mean I live with endo like chronic migraines you know bipolar I also have IBS so like there's lots of fart jokes we always make and stuff too like it's like you know it's not a big deal we work in church you know sometimes like you know someone goes oh my god Chloe I just like farted and I was like woohoo you're getting scared like to the bed and stretch like that's what happens when we stretch you know intestines are moving around your body um so I think we our big thing is taking the shame away from being a woman being a human having bodily functions sweat farts cry you know crying you know like it's not um and then trying to give them permission to do that too so oh. we, yeah so we do things like that in class yeah <laughs> and as and as the business that you've grown how does it make you feel and how has it helped you in your life I think it's just I think for me when I was really unwell so I had a suicide attempt in 2015 and 2016 and coming out of that and realizing oh, beauty out of ashes like I really thought mm -hmm. my life was over um, I lost a lot of friends um, I lost a lot of family members like I was just very unwell and no one wanted to accept that I was unwell they just didn't really register that that was a thing um, and I thought how the hell am I ever going to do anything from this and I actually had a doctor say to me I need to be on permanent disability you'll never work you know you just need to accept these things and I'm really stubborn as you can show me very fan that I'm like no you are not going to decide my life for me I get to decide and that might mean that I do go on disability at some point in my life or I may need extra help but knowing um you know that I think God can use all things for good even the most horrific in our lives I think um, and I look back at little I think of me as little Chloe like five years ago and go Haha, you had no idea what you could do <laughs> like you got through a global pandemic in a business and you didn't have to go back to hospital like that that's yeah so it's kind of see, yeah um but yeah yeah knowing that you can you can get through it yeah um yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations. Sounds like you've, you've been on a tough journey, like all of us have a story, but um, you've come out the other side and it's beautiful what you're creating now. So you should be very proud of yourself and I congratulate you on all the work that you're doing because it's, it's phenomenal. It really is. Thank you. I just love chatting to you and like hearing <laughs> your story and things and like you're doing amazing things too. I think it's amazing. You're just popping yourself out there and it's amazing you're going to do great things yes thank you we're all doing the best we can in the, in the space that we're trying to create the good space the one that we we want everyone to tune into and listen to okay. um and yeah. so yeah thank you um so that's it from us today the first one of 2021 is done <laughs> thank goodness that's over no yeah. <laughs> december but I'm yes. assuming it's January in my brain. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, I say, a tough year for uh, 2020 for a lot of people, but I think it was a big learning year for a lot of yes. us and we would have got a lot of out of it. I think everyone Definitely. got their own journey. Yeah. But I want to thank you so much for coming on today and talking because I do appreciate the time that you give to sit here and chat. Um, I like chatting. love it. love yeah. hearing the story and... Um, I think what you're doing is really powerful is speaking into women's lives and like you know sharing your story which I know is a very powerful one and is still you know we're all still growing um yeah yeah well women's speaking I say <laughs> it is beautiful I love the feminine energy I don't know why it's just something well, something about girls yes I love yeah, it I, I love it. <laughs> it's just it's probably why I watch too many chick flicks and I'm like oh feminine <laughs> Yeah, get your Lee Bond vibes on you're just like yes yes I know <laughs> and even like just dancing and like Anyway, that's a different talk for another Yeah. Time. <laughs> but thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in today for the first one of 2021. Um, and we will have many more to come. So enjoy your Sunday, everyone. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, Chloe. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs>